Hello everybody. Over the next few minutes we will discuss how to use the prostate cancer detection software developed by Siemens. Here are my disclosures. We know that there are four major benefits of the MRI directed pathway. The major benefit is reduction in the number of patients undergoing biopsy and it also reduces the diagnoses of indolent cancers and this is related to the rule out ability of MRI. But we also know that there is a greater precision of tumorous stratification and then slight increase in the detection of clinically significant disease, particularly for biopsy naive patients, and this relates to the rule in ability of the MRI pathway. However, we continue to face challenges. These include unnecessary biopsies after a positive MRI. In other words, no cancer is detected or only indolent cancer is seen. We miss clinically significant cancers in both MRI positive and negative cases. We know that there is a steep learning curve for both radiologists and biopsy operators. Radiologists working without feedback or MDT participation have poor performance. There are marked variations in the positive predictive value. And finally, we know that it is time intensive to review, report, contour, uh, both lesions and the prostate in preparation for biopsy. Any AI should be able to ensure that the main benefits of biopsy avoidance are maintained. In other words, we want consistent and high negative predictive values. AI systems should also increase positive predictive values and also improve the consistency of positive predictive values at a range of disease prevalences. The AI system should help improve the triage for indeterminate scans, in other words, increase specificity. AI should also help decrease time-intensive tasks such as outlining and reporting. And for this, we need standard operating procedures to successfully deploy AI into the clinic. Today we'll discuss how to use the Siemens AI software which can be found on the Singovia platform and the following demonstration shows how to use it in practice. Start off by typing in the patient ID, Siemens Prostate AI Demo 1 for example. Make sure that the assigned workflow is that of the prostate. Double click on the patient once the workflow has been assigned and the first window appears. On the top left you'll see the T2 image in the axial plane with the ADC map on the right hand side and then a fusion image in the middle. You'll see the coronal image automatically loaded you can review the abnormality at this point looking for extent of disease there is the high B value image B1000 and that is the B2000 image which we're going to window quite sharply on the bottom right hand side we see a K trans map or a wash in map if you have a dynamic contrast enhanced study also available you can use the DCE task card if you want go to the middle of the gland and scroll through the data and you can see that the lesion enhances quite briskly again we window it put a mean curve if you if that is something that is in your practice and the contralateral right transition zone also and you can see that the curve shapes are very different one has a wash in one has a wash out and the colors correspond and then click on the AI, which is entitled Prostate Lesions. And you can see immediately that there is a heat map on the lesion. Its volume is uh, 20 ml, as you can see. You can see that the software has allocated a score of 5 to this lesion with a level of suspicion of 99 then you can assign the T2 score 
the diffusion score, the DCE positivity negativity, whether you thought there was or not extra prostatic extension, identify this as the index lesion and then accept that lesion. Once you have done that, you can export the contours for biopsy. Again, you can see the outline of the gland, the outline of the transition zone, and the outline of the tumor are exported to a DICOM RT object so they can be used for biopsy purposes. Once you have done this, you can do the final review, confirm whether there is or there is not extra prostatic disease, look for pelvic sidewall or lymph nodes, evaluate for seminal vesicle invasion in the coronal plane, load in the sagittal plane to confirm the absence of seminal vesicle invasion, and the last task will be to export the automated report to a PDF file. Locate the destination directory, type in the file name and save. And you're all done. So you can see it's fairly simple to use the Siemens Prostate AI which currently only uses T2 imaging and diffusion imaging in the axial plane. For those of you who are interested in the system's uh, performance, uh, this recent publication provides the data. You can see that for a PIRADS category 4 or above, a radiologist using the AI improves its performance by about 4%. A radiologist using a cutoff of 3 and above increases the performance, but this is not statistically significant. Interestingly, there is an improved inter-reader concordance, and the reading time between using the AI actually decreases by about 20%. Here are the AUC values from the rock curves. You can see this is the, the radiologist without AI this is the radiologist with the AI. This is the AI performing alone. And this is the median of all the radiologists who took part in this study. And you can see that if all seven radiologists were looking at the same images, then they would have the highest performance. If you look at the individual radiologists themselves, you can see that for the PIRADS cutoff of 3 or above or 4 or above, there is a reduction in the number of false negatives, so without AI, with AI, a reduction in the number of false negatives. For a cutoff of 4 and above, you can see again a reduction in false negatives, but you can see that there is some increase in false positivity for some of the radiologists, 3 out of the 7, for example. Now, it's important to also consider that we are always trying to balance the harms from false results from the benefits of the true results. Looking at the harms, remember that false negatives have a greater impact than false positives in terms of the harms that they cause, but these are not equivalent. So these are the takeaway points. The AI helps to deliver a performance equivalent to several radiologists with similar levels of false positive and false negatives. It's like having a radiologist in your pocket. Clearly the initial role is as a diagnostic aid and for outlining tasks to enable integration into the radiologist's workflow to support MRI-directed biopsies. The development of the AI as a Decision support tool will require a larger body of work, including multi-center, multi-vendor studies, 
where the clinical needs and settings will be different, where disease prevalences will be different, and where we will need to take into account patient preferences and tolerances for false positive results. However, it is clear that AI software will be essential to the successful deployment of a community-wide MRI prostate cancer diagnostic pathway for both screen-detected and suspected prostate cancer populations. Thank you very much for listening.